Hi everybody, Magpie here once again, and this time we are going to be talking about an anime that I've been totally excited for for the past couple of months. Uh, and this is the reason why Rayliana ended up at the Duke's mansion. And I know it's a mouthful, but believe me, it's a really fun story. So to discuss the first episode of this anime series is my good friend and somebody who's actually collaborated with me in the past, JC Fergie. So hello, Fergie. Heyo. And if you guys remember, during the time that we had Bookworm Season 3 premiering, uh, Fergie not only co-hosted a, a couple of episodes with me, but he also has a anime reactions channel. So if you want to check it out, I don't know if Fergie, if you're going to be doing this one, are you going to be covering this one? I filmed a reaction to episode one prior to this discussion right now, so at least the first one's going to be filmed and edited. I don't know about the rest of the season. We'll see how that goes, but yeah, I don't want to get into <laughs> okay. too much of my thoughts right now. <laughs> okay, so no commitment. You know, there is the three episode rule that I, I know oh, yeah. a lot of people talk about it, so we'll see what the next three episodes show. So, a lot of people, at least many of the people that follow my content, I'm sure you have never really heard about this and why I'm so excited about it. And the reason why Reliana ended up at the Duke's Mansion, it's a Korean manhwa. And this is the summary. Poisoned to death by her own betrothed, Yoon Ha didn't wake up in a novel story just to be killed off again as an unfortunate extra. To change her story, she needs a cover. Six months pretending to be the fake fiancé of the novel's male protagonist, Duke Noah Winnight. But will this cold-hearted, angel-faced demon of a man really help her avoid another ill-fated ending? That gives a lot more away than the crunchy roll description that I just read. Oh. <laughs> Living in a fairy tale may sound like a dream, but for this heroine, it is more of a nightmare. After her mysterious death, Rinko is born as Rayliana, a loved and wealthy character in a novel, but she knows the ending, her murder at the hands of her fiancé. So she hatches up a plan to stay alive, one that involves a devilish duke and a phony engagement. Can she rewrite history? Ooh, I like that one. I was reading the Korean manga summary, and her name is Yunha, whereas in the Japanese, it was changed to Rinko Hanazaki. So the introduction of this story is basically gives us like a general bird's eye view into this, and we get this charming world, and it feels like a kind of like a turn of the century or like Victorian era kind of feel and has a very interesting vibe with like classical music playing in the background. So already we're getting really nice establishing shots and just setting the whole mood of the story. Going in, I thought they were gonna do like a peppy, kind of like fun, lighthearted feel to this anime and getting in this beautiful shots and the baroque-ish classical music, I was like, whoa, so we're going the dramatic route. Okay, I'm down for it. And it immediately cuts to her just being like, <sighs> I'm sad, no window. So she tells us that she's not supposed to be part of this world, uh, that this is not her world, and why is she here? And we get flashbacks of her past and who she actually is. She tells us that her name is Rinko Hanazaki, and that she is now somehow ended up inside a book, and her name is now Rayliana McMillan. I kind of wish we got more time in like the original world before her like isekai just because like yes we get enough information being like hey i'm trying to go to college i've gotten denied a bunch oh i got in push like that whole entire setup just felt almost comedic in its timing it, it didn't feel real in any sense it's just like what a weird contrived setup for this story that i enjoy but just like that opening was just like what is going on and the fact that he dissolves into Tetris blocks is even more confusing. What I notice is that they kind of do go almost like adapt every single panel. Like they're really <laughs> faithful about how they're adapting. Like I noticed like there were some scenes that were just pulled straight out of the manhwa. But yeah, like there were some questionable choices like the pixelated person that threw her off the roof. And yeah, we also don't get, like you said, her backstory. And I guess in the grand scheme of things, uh, it's not important. In all of these animes of this genre, they will always sweep the past under the rug. And they were like, let's let's just keep going. Forget about the past, blah, blah, blah. 
And yeah. yeah, and based on the way the story goes, I do wish that they had just put a little bit more time into the past because it does, it is important. It is, it is, I'm not going to spoil anything, but it is important. From my perspective, I think it's like half of it is just the author wants to give the uh, character enough open endedness that uh, the reader can self insert themselves into that role. It's just like, oh, yeah, I too went to college. Uh, any other specific details? Nah, don't get into those, you know, you just fill them in in your own, you know. But, you know, later as you kind of get into some of her more interest and hobbies and stuff like that, I wish we did get or of her backstory because as the opening shows just because it's the opening and of course that spoils later story stuff but she was uh she was quite featured with a gun on the opening and just like oh that feels like a character background aspect that i i would like to at least have established before going into the show like sure they can always do like oh yeah here's what i did backstory flashback whatever sort of things later on but you know it's and it has me curious just kind of watching the opening again it's just like yeah okay that's She's she's very gun prominent, you know, like gun power, woo. But <laughs> like, give me a bit of that backstory before being thrown into this world. And speaking of that opening, oh my goodness, that opening just slaps. It's so ridiculously good. I don't know about you. I really enjoyed it. Just just the music. Close your yes. eyes. The music, music was wise, amazing. It it's so good. Visuals. Without the music, it's a slideshow. Yeah, it's a slideshow. And that kind of gives it away. Like early on, I could see things that they were budgeting the animation. I was like, oh, OK, I see that. But OK, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> but yeah. yeah opening song amazing and it's called survive by minda rin and i think her she has a youtube channel she started as a youtube artist oh, doing doing covers on um, with her guitar so um it's pretty awesome so go check out her music video it's already up i will leave the link in the description it's so cool and i love how they just pull some aspects of the story like symbolic things and put them in her music video really awesome so, shall we move on? Yeah. She's okay. now getting her hair braided. <laughs> her maid comes in and while they're taking, you know, doing her lady stuff, doing her makeup or whatever, um, she, again, we get uh, some backstory of the kingdom or the world that she's now stuck in. And this is called the Kingdom of Chamus. And in this kingdom, she is Raeliana. She's one of two daughters. She has a younger sister and she has a loving father and a mom who's a little bit strict, but she's ladylike. And you know that they're a very loving family. I love it. Yet she is determined. She doesn't want to die an early death. We also get a bit of background story about the actual book that she is living in and how she is not even a, like a villainess. She doesn't even deserve that in this story. She's just a supporting character for a story. Her death, I wouldn't even say that. She's a plot device. That, that's right. It's her death makes is the actual reason why there's a book in the, in the first place, because that's the one that just kickstarts the action of the story. So it's pretty tragic because she's just basically going to be discarded as some plot device, like you say. But she's like, no, I don't want to die again. It's not fair. It's not cool. And I love the line, I will, I refuse to die a second time over my dead body. I'm like, well, yeah, you're you know going to... the point? <laughs> yeah, that's the whole point. I laughed at the periodic table for no particular reason. I don't know why. It's just like arsenic. <sighs> It's a fun choice, especially with the teacup that's falling and you get AS, AS. I didn't even know arsenic was an element in the periodic table. I am now wiser uh, about chemistry. And then there's this douche nozzle. What's his name? Francis? I don't know. I just never bothered to like put it to memory just because he doesn't deserve to have it remembered. He's the worst. He's trash. He's below trash. He's scum. He's, uh, yeah, he's the worst. But I do have to go into who he is. So, unfortunately. Yes, of yeah. course. Unfortunately, you know. Please remind me. <laughs> I'll remind you. His name is Francis Brooks. He is uh, the guy who, in the story, is poisons her because he brings her tea every evening laced with arsenic. Once Raleigh dies, he's going to swindle her father and her mother you know her family out of their money and um that's where the heroine of the story is gonna appear she's gonna solve the case and set everything to rights and she is determined to call off the engagement but because 
he and his family are well established they're old money and she's basically new money her father barely got in this generation he got a baronessy so like the the disparity in their stations even though her father is an, has a title it's a bot title or he received it because he made so much money in the oil industry so their their status does not match and that is why she she cannot on her own break the engagement no matter how much she tries higher class can't argue sort of thing yeah down with nobility <laughs> eat the rich yeah eat the rich so one of the things I do appreciate in this anime is that it has a totally different visual style. It's not like your usual anime. You can see like the Victorian kind of look and it has like this lighting that I really enjoy and it's very atmospheric almost because she doesn't know how to break an engagement. She goes to some bookstore and she finds the most, uh, the most random book there. Uh, Outlandish. <laughs> it's so weird. How to cleanly break up with your boyfriend. Top 550 things. It's like you see. I don't see know if this is like actually important to anything, but like this scene also confirmed to me that this world has the printing press, so we're at least around the industrial revolution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is this is around like Victorian era, so like late 1800s. Brilliant! It tries a couple of very interesting ways to get him to get angry at her, and the most extreme of that is she basically almost shoots his head off. Casual <laughs> attempted murder, no big deal. <laughs> yeah, very casual. But yet the man remains insistent that they are going to marry and that there's nothing she can do about it. It gets really ugly when she tries to break it off and he basically threatens her, saying that there's nothing she or her family could do. It's really disgusting and he deserves a kick you know where. Uh, he, he, be <laughs> he becomes like a very cartoon level villain and he's just like, ha ha ha, you can't do anything, I'm going to control you. <laughs> like, bro, yeah. just take it down a level. <laughs> So she's discouraged and she goes to, you know, social event because rich people do rich things. And one of the things they Obligations. do... Obligations. Yeah, they have to go and mingle with the rest of uh, other parasites like themselves. We need to keep the economy flowing. We need to have this ball. Oh, uh, it's a let's gala. Let's go dance. They're fundraising for the children that they're already starving because they're not paying their parents well enough. It's... Look I mean, all these children poor are dying in the streets. We should feed them more bread with the wheat that we're siphoning off from the farmers. No bread, no. Fergie. It's cake. Cake. Have to let them eat cake. <laughs> so we oh, see. Oh, I saw this picture earlier of a, like a person who put like a, a cake up on top of their fridge and it's like, I'm putting the cake here because Gregory will eat it. And then there's a picture of like their cat Gregory like jumped up on top of the fridge just to sit on it. And it's like, bro, come on now. Gregory is a ninja. <laughs> I have to find it. It's funny. Freaking Gregory. All right. So we go and we get our first glimpse of Noah Windknight. If you have... Wayne Knight. Wind Knight? How do you say it? Win I thought it was Wayne, like Bruce Wayne. Wayne Knight. Oh, uh, Wayne you know? Knight? Okay. That's what it, it always felt like a freaking Batman joke to me. Do you, did, you, did you watch the sub or the dub? I watch sub, but that's, that's how I always watch stuff. I don't know. I, I don't know what the English language is. Ah. Uh. You're such a snob. <laughs> Dude, if I can't get it in its original source, you know, the way it's intended to be watched, like, no, I don't actually care, but it's, like, <laughs> at least it's interesting. You got that dub angle. I got the sub angle. I, know, I actually the watched the sub first, and then I took the screenshots and the dub, so I watched it twice. And, oh, that's fair. Then. Yeah. And one of the voice actors reminded me, if one voice actor that I really like, I still have to check the credits if it's him, but he appeared in Fruits Basket, so I'm excited. Hopefully it is him, have to check it. Pardon this interruption, but I went back to check who were the actual dub voices that I recognized. And yes, Reliana is voiced by Lindsay Seidel, who did Fiona in Spy Fam. And Noah is voiced by none other than Ian Sinclair who not only did work in Fritz Basket, but he's the amazing and most iconic narrator of Kaguya-sama. Okay, so let's just call him Noah, okay? Who cares what his last name is? Wind Knight, Wine Knight, whatever. Let's just go with Wind Noah. Knight. <laughs> Honestly, I, I don't care. His name is Noah. The one I care the most about is Adam Taylor. That's my favorite character in the whole series, so... 
I don't care about Noah. Though I must say that he comes across as more appealing here than in the Korean webtoon. So. Oh yeah, like so far he already seems like a Prince Charming. He doesn't seem like the evil character that we expect him to be when he's first like introduced in the manhwa. Mm -hmm. It's just like, oh okay, this guy has a thing about him. But no, so far this guy seems very handsome, very attractive. I don't see why people have such a opinion about him, you know. <laughs> yeah, there's supposed to be some kind of scandal. We don't know what that scandal is that made it so that he was for a while he was out of the line of succession but now he's back and he is seen by the old nobility as you know this bastion of hope you know he's like a symbol of like conservatism and not only that but he is um the king's younger brother so should the king die he's the next one in line for the throne was um, it all this like established in the manhwa at this point they just like admit it or they do establish it. They establish it, I think, in chapter three. So check it out. So basically, a summary is that the people of this kingdom, the nobles, they're very worried because with the rise of, you know, capitalism, <laughs> um, the royal authority is beginning to wane. So all the rich people, they're basically destroying society. Not like, you know, royalties doing any favors to the poor and the, and the, small people but anyway these nobles they crafted a bill that would make it so that they could control their power they could continue to hold on to their power and um and that nobody would be able to transfer noble ranks and that the new money wouldn't be able to buy titles but in order for that bill whatever to be passed it needs a royal seal and the royal seal is missing so there's no way they can do anything for now so she's introducing us to this Noah guy. As she looks at him, she realizes that he is a very powerful man. And while she is a poor, powerless woman who is only the daughter of a extremely wealthy baron, she might not be able to break her engagement, but Noah might be able to, you know, help her out a little. So she comes up with this idea. Since she knows all about the story and she has knowledge from another world, not even knowledge from another world, just knowledge about this story and what's going to happen, she can use that to her advantage. Yeah, they don't really pull from her like otherworldly knowledge much. It's just like, I know the future sort of cognitive. Yeah. yeah. So she doesn't use any of her college bound education, none of her height. Maybe that's why she wasn't able to make it to college in the first place, because she had no knowledge in her head. <laughs> nothing to bring to this new world unlike urano who had you know at least the ability to make soap and rinsham but anyway uh, yeah. <laughs> being mean but yeah, just a joke um so she goes after the duke she she goes to chase him and she chases him even all the way out to the garden a dark garden okay girl talk about plot armor anything could have happened out there but okay um, Before that, there's also a gray hair guy with the mole, freckle, whatever. Yes. So while she chases after Noah, the gray haired guy, tell us about that. <laughs> you watched this episode an hour ago, dude. I did. No, I did. I did. And he's all like, yo, uh, I hear your relationships in the shitter. Uh, you better get that shit fixed or you're going to get shit fixed. Uh, okay, bye. And that's all I really remember about him. He just, he seems like he's up to mischief. Yes, I think his name is Jake Langston, and he threatens him, like you said. Apparently, Francis is also in a bit of a bind. If this deal with Raeliana falls through, his own life is in danger, and I'm already cackling. I'm like, yes, die, die, you miserable wretch. Um, so he goes to chase after Raeliana into the garden and he finds her there but before he finds her we cut back to Rayliana and she is standing there looking at Noah she went all the way to this moonlight garden can it be more romantic than a moonlit rose garden well she presents herself and while she's there she just immediately goes into what she wants she's like I want to strike a deal with you and she brings up the matter about the royal seal However, before she can even talk about it any further, they are interrupted by none other than Francis. I'm going to be honest with you, because it's been like so long since I've read it at the first time, and plus so many other manhwas in between. 
I've I kind of forgot how this initial scenario was gonna play out. And in my head, in the back somewhere, I was just like, oh no, this poor girl, she's just like approaching this like prince or whoever, uh, real high, like ranking official, you know, unprompted. I feel like she's gonna be like accosted by a bunch of guards, be like, who goes there? How dare you approach? You know, and just immediately have like a horrible misunderstanding on her hands. But the fact that it worked out in such a like Prince Charming esque manner is at least good for now. But I was just thinking there's like there's so many ways it could have already gone wrong. Right? I'm reading it from also a historical romance perspective. Like historical romances, they love to put like some kind of plot where there's like a secret rendezvous in the garden and there's always some kind of trouble. Given the fact that he has um, like some kind of spy or maybe some kind of like bodyguard out there, that he would have like jumped out at her before she even had a chance to open her mouth. You know, I was like, yeah, girl, it's exactly. very, very dangerous what you're doing. Very reckless. But again, plot armor. She has that advantage that she can't die unless she dies at the right time for the book. At least that's what she thinks. Oh, well, yeah, that's what she thinks. But I mean, she's already going to die. So she might as well just do the stupid, most reckless thing ever. Yeah, that was so weird. It's just like it's going up to a guy and just like, hey, you know that thing that you've been looking for secretly and haven't told anyone about ever? Well, I'm going to just brazenly bring it up now, not tell you anything else, get interrupted and then piss off somewhere. And you're just going to be so confused. You know, like the balls on her just like the absolute brazenness just to do that like I, I don't even know how i would react in such a situation like that be like i don't know walking up to nicholas cage and being like hey i know where the declaration of independence is and national treasure and just being like excuse me what <laughs> just like immediately put her in change and be like you yeah. have something we need it now talk we're gonna put you in the dungeon you know Friggin' tell us everything you need Torture to know. Torture you, like there's no- me. Pets off, Mr. Francis, you're not busy here, you know. Yeah, like- What's that you're impeding us? Arrest him too. Like, <laughs> come on now, you have the authority to start throwing people in chains. Like, yeah. what are you doing? That's why it's kind of ridiculous that she would actually need to negotiate because he has the power to just get that information from her, torture her, right? Yeah. But this is not that kind of story, Fergie. This is a sweet story where our heroes, because this is this guy is so obviously the hero. He would never torture a girl, okay? Never. Okay? If you say so. <laughs> All right. So this happens. That guy comes in and she says like I'm going to use this to my advantage. And she brazenly holds his hand. Oh my goodness, at least he has a glove on. Because imagine if it had been unprotected hand holding, Fergie. Oh uh, my god, man. The communities that we frequent would freak. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, she goes and she declares in the most bold manner. Man, this girl, she really is bold. I like that about her. She declares like that, that, um, well, he and I have had a passionate relationship or something like that. Like basically that they, they, they have feelings for each other. And she just hopes, hopes with all her might that Noah plays along. Well, he at first he looks a little startled, but she reminds him, she mouths the word royal seal to remind him that this was what she needed for her to give the information about the royal seal that's missing. Happily, he complies and smiles and agrees. Yes, we are in that kind of relationship. Shocking, Francis. And then conveniently, at the nick of time, you know, his friend, butler, assistant, whatever, retainer comes up and is like, hey, we need to leave now. And the little mangua, there's a tiny little panel that says, thank goodness for my dad's curfew hours. It's so cute. So she goes. Meanwhile, he throws a hissy fit, but he is stopped by the most handsome and debonair Noah. Tells him to shut up and to let her go. Just like, you can't lay a hand on her. I haven't found out my information yet. Exactly. Francis goes away and Noah's left by himself in the garden. And we see that he there's some guy in the shadows hiding and he gives him some orders. He tells him, go and investigate Raeliana and also put someone to watch Francis if he tries to harm her or just check his movements. If he does something shady, you know how to act, right? He returns home and when his servants greet him, by the way, there it is, Adam Taylor on the right. When his servants greet him, uh, he mentions that at the ball, he encountered a puppy. 
There's Rayliana. Again, that's yeah, I that's pulled from that, the manga. Hmm? That phrasing always kind of got me. It was just like, I found a puppy. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Rayliana is going home. And again, she is looking out the window and she remembers those words from her past life that says that her life will be cut short. And that is the future that is foreseen for her. And again, she reiterates her resolve that she will not die. You can count on that. And that is the end of the episode. Ta-da! Episode one. Flowing uh, petals during the credits mm -hmm. as we have still frames of her looking longingly in the distance. The ending song is called Always and Forever. I like the opening song better though, but they're both really good. All right. So any initial thoughts or impressions about this first episode? Uh. Well, like, in, in general, like, animes, when they have, like, their episode one, for the most part, that's probably, like, an 8 out of 10 when it comes to their, like, animation quality and budget and stuff like that, because usually they want to get, like, a really good first impression, mm. but then also they might want to save a little bit of that budget for a finale or some whatever big action scene, but it felt like this this anime was just kind of coasting at like a 5 out of 10 in animation. <laughs> like visually, I, I loved everything that they drew. It's just how they connected those drawings together made me pain a little, you know? Agreed. It, it, it wasn't it wasn't the best. Yeah, and, some... and, I, and I was really disappointed in that because it, it looked really good. I loved how everything seemed like colored pencil drawings and like or like a little bit of like a pastelness to it and how the shading was kind of defined and sketchy it really felt like it was trying to pull from its manhwa roots mm -hmm. but with saying that it, that was also its biggest detriment it felt like a manhwa i felt like i was watching a visual novel in, in a lot of senses like certain scenes had very like rudimentary animation or limited animation and the way a lot of scenes were kind of shot and composed like characters were placed in like the upper corners of frames instead of like relying on like the general third lines and or like mm -hmm. i don't know like yeah they they, po they focused on a lot of really weird stuff you know it's, it felt like the characters were never really front and center in a, in certain shots mm-hmm yeah, there was a particular part, I think when, uh, what's his name, that the gray-headed guy, the Jake Langston, he appears, they put his face right in the middle of the frame. I'm like, just a little less headroom, please tilt down, camera. <laughs> um, just, yeah, there, there were some framings that were kind of like a little bit, eh, I could have done a little bit better on the framing on that. But, and I agree, I, I spotted several parts where the animation was just like, whoa, that's like the father bringing up some food to his mouth. And that was like, that was like three frames. I, I kind of think about this a lot in the back of my head when I'm watching stuff, but it's just like anytime 3D model stuff, like sure, okay, you can get away with the carriage and the horse. Like I, I get that, a lot of shows do that. But like the, the certain shots of the chessboard coming up and it's like, okay, how much animation time can we waste by showing this 3D chessboard be animated and swiveled around before we have to get back to animating things like <laughs> i don't know those just in, in my head it's like how are they like consciously saving money by you know utilizing all these different tricks yeah and you know what i admire their art yeah i admire oh, again, their I love art. the art like like not just us because the art is pretty it's very very pretty but it allowed them to do some very new and unseen before choices like they don't draw like pictures of, of people's faces. It kind of feels like an OVA that, I don't know if you watched the real life, there's an OVA and everybody was just basically like, <laughs> like silhouettes. So the boys were in blue, the girls were in pink. This is barely oh, just okay. a step above that. Um, so they, well, like, they, I don't mind the silhouette aesthetic. Cause yeah. like they don't have to consciously draw in everything, but like at least it's better than throwing in just like 3d models of awkward cutouts <laughs> yeah uh i i didn't mind either you know why because they the aesthetic kind of fit it it really they did fit it it's already like dramatic lighting 
which fits the atmosphere of the story. We didn't go for a peppy, energetic kind of story adaptation. They went for like a more dramatic, which allowed them to make those kind of choices. And speaking of like the dramatic moods, I really enjoyed the soundtrack. It's very orchestral. I, I don't know. I just really liked it. I'm a sucker for Yeah, I tried to pay attention that. to the soundtrack at the beginning because mm. like I like listening to certain like anime stuff when reading. So I was really hopeful for the soundtrack, but then after like the first five minutes it just kinda fell into the background for me. So I'll yeah. have to like rewatch it again just to pay attention, but it didn't nothing stood out as bad and I really enjoyed the opening. Yeah. And it's also very very good for the time period because it's kind of set in a world that's like Victorian era so it works I I really like um, instrumental music and they even have a little bit of a harpsichord in, at some point so that was cute this covered four episodes so what do you what did four you think about the chapters. pace oh yeah this covered four chapters thank you uh, what did you think about the pacing of this one uh, I I didn't mind it I did I don't felt like nothing was overly fast or overly slow i felt like maybe some scenes could have been done a little differently but i don't feel like anything was necessarily bad hmm. um i'm still hopeful and optimistic to see where it goes i i just you know hope that the animation gets a little better as it goes on because the art's on point it's just again connecting those pieces of arts together mm -hmm. in a fluid motion mm -hmm. is their biggest issue yeah I have a feeling that if this is the first episode and this is like, like you say, they they put a, a little bit more or a lot more budget into the first episode or maybe the first three episodes. Yeah, I, I'm afraid that it'll. Polish. Yeah, I'm afraid that in the future we're, we'll be in for some rough animation. If it'll be like a PowerPoint. I don't want that. I, I don't want that to happen. This this story deserves so much better. It does. It does. <laughs> this story is actually pretty pretty near and dear to my heart because um, it was recommended by one of the bookworms. I forget who, but I was I read it while I had COVID. <laughs> so oh, okay, so it was your nice comfy thing while you were yeah. sick in bed dying. Yeah, so I was I, I loved it and I it it helped me. Get, it was one of the things that helped me get through COVID. And of course, my favorite character hasn't appeared, but I have I have talked about this one in one of my earlier videos. If you haven't watched that video. Video, click on the little thingy that's coming up or the I'm sure by episode three we'll have him on screen yeah <laughs> yeah and he appeared briefly but we only got his back that was when Noah returned home there was a butler and then there was another guy with gray hair that was in the right that was um Adam so overall this whole manga has um let's see I think it has 147 chapters so not bad so i'm hopeful that they adapt the whole thing if they move things along and then they get rid of like stupid like love triangle wrenched in you know how it's they always put like fluff i forget to yeah they always fluff up um stories so and it also depends on how they want to follow the perspective because if they just follow rayliana then they can get a rid of a few scenes that just focus on the other character that she's not privy to in her perspective mm -hmm. you know i think they could finish the whole story in 24 episodes maybe uh, no well if they could but i wouldn't want them to no, i wouldn't want them to but at this rate of four chapters per episode um we're looking at 36 episodes yeah, that's three seasons. And, and that's not counting the extra chapters that have the epilogue. They could do it in a, in a split core season, but I think they really should do a three season arc if they wanted to do it proper. Yeah. Well, we'll see. I mean, there's some shoujo mangas that are getting a second arc season or whatever. Like, oh gosh, what's that stupid sugar apple fairy tale is coming back? No. Oh my God. I was so hopeful and then I just by the third fourth episode I was just like yeah this isn't my jam anymore I, right? I don't know Fairy Ferdinand isn't interesting to me it, yeah Fairy Ferdinand was not enough to keep me watching and especially at the end oh my gosh like really really oh golly they should have given some money to this extra money to this show because it's it's a fun one yeah. and they should transfer it over all the money from Sugar Apple Fairy Tale to this one all right. So what would you give this first episode on a grading scale at 1 to 10? Don't ask me to rate. I never rate. Uh, on a scale oh, of one to well, 10. I'd say just about um, like a 7.5. Well, it wasn't bad. wasn't great. 
But, yeah. You know, it has room to improve. It also has room to fall. It's just, I'm hopeful. Mm. You know, I give it a eight. I give it an eight. I'm the kind of person that will overlook some sins of animation. <laughs> Like, I know I mentioned them, but I was totally willing to overlook them. Just make sure that it's just, as a whole, it comes off cohesive, that it's not, like, too distracting. And I like the fact that it's it's it remained really faithful to the manga. And yes, it did cut out some of the stuff about her past life and how she was struggling and getting into college and all that stuff. But in the end, they'll probably disclose that in future episodes, so... I'm hopeful about yeah, it. Probably. Yeah. So I give it a good solid eight. This was a good episode. I totally look forward to watching the next one. But for now, we're going to end this video here. And uh, remember, uh, Fergie is doing a reaction of this episode, at least for now. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. All right. But yeah, check out his reaction. I'll link it in the description and also on my pinned post. So go and subscribe and i hope you all enjoyed this and we'll see you next week thank Bye. you fergie for joining me no problem take care everybody bye bye